So we're going back to the moon. It all happened in the 60s. Put your hands up, those who remember the 60s. Two, this, this happened when your grandparents were little. That was me when, in the 60s, I was a schoolboy in the north of England, totally captivated by the whole idea of, of space and space exploration. This was something that um, moved me immensely and has kept me motivated throughout my whole life so far. Uh, I could have told you back then the names of the dogs that flew on the Soviet vehicles and all the names of the astronauts and so on. I could have told you that 24 men went to the moon uh, and 12 of them walked on the moon and three of them even did the journey twice. It's true, you can Google it. I don't need to Google it, I talk to the people who did it. So I'll share some of those stories with you. Here I am, half a century later, as a volunteer at America's uh, uh, Aerospace Museum in Washington, D.C., as a volunteer guide. And one of the wonderful things about that is when the children come around and see the exhibits, how excited they are by what they see and, and how it reflects their understanding. In, in my heart of hearts, I've always been someone who's been a long-range thinker, a very forward-looking person. I never cared much about the past. Once I started doing this volunteer work, uh, I discovered how important it is to... Uh, to link with young people and how heritage things matter. And now I'm a judge on the Google Lunar X Prize through a long and complicated story. I'm still a volunteer. Uh, there are nine of us. Our job is to ensure fairness in the competition. We're totally separate from the X Prize organization. We're independent judges. But it gives me a chance to help make space history myself happen again. You've heard about the main prize. There are some subsidiary prizes. Some of them are called heritage prizes. And I'm particularly interested in them because of my interest in the future and in the past. Uh, the heritage prize happens when you land your rover near, uh, let's say, Apollo 11 site, take some wonderful images of it, high definition, and send them back to Earth you get an extra prize money for that of up to $4 million. So that's quite an incentive. How many things are there up there that could be a target for the Heritage Prize? Well, there's a lot. Uh, we hit the moon maybe 70 times uh, over the course of time with, with uh, Soviet stuff, Japanese stuff, Chinese stuff, uh, American stuff. And some of it's on the far side as well. So there's no shortage of objects. Every time an Apollo uh, lander, when they did their work and went back again, they left about a hundred objects scattered around the soil near, near where they were. They all count as uh, targets for the Heritage Prize. Here's Al Shepard. I'm going to talk briefly about Al Shepard because he represents in one person almost the embodiment of the 60s. He was the first American in space and you can see him in his Mercury capsule, which is very tiny. It was so tiny, they used to say, you don't climb into a Mercury capsule, you, you put it on. Um, you, you can see, well, he, he, he was uh, in Freedom 7, and he went up into space and history, and he landed 15 minutes later. That's all. The first American space flight was 15 minutes and landed in the Atlantic Ocean. Nevertheless, it made him world famous. He was on postage stamps on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, he was invited to Washington, D.C. to address the Congress, and he met the president who gave him a medal. And the president was very much involved and excited by what the Mercury astronauts were doing. And just three weeks after this first 15-minute flight, the president made an extraordinary statement in public. And he said, where are we going? The moon. When are we going? Before this decade is out, which was eight years at the time. 
nobody believed this was going to be possible. The astronauts didn't believe it. The, uh, they said, what? We've only just done 15 minutes. We haven't even been in orbit yet. The engineers said, this Mercury capsule can't go to the moon. But the president had spoken. So those of us who were fortunate enough to be around back then watched uh, step by step by step. They did it. So that a decade later, Al Shepard did stand on the moon. There he is at the foot of the steps of Apollo 14. And, you know, when they come down the land uh, uh, onto the surface of the moon, everybody remembers what Neil Armstrong said. It was uh, one small step for a man, but a giant leap for mankind. Anybody remember what anybody else said when they came down? I don't think so. Uh, Apollo 12, for instance, was Pete Conrad. And he was a small guy, about five foot six. And I'll tell you what he said. He said, it might have been a small step for Neil, but it was a mighty big one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not so historic, perhaps. Well, Al Shepard, when he landed, he said, it's been a long way, but we're here. Because he was the first, and he landed on the moon. Uh, now, the funny thing is, Al Shepard left a golf ball on the moon. You may remember, he took a swipe at a golf ball. And he always used to tell his colleagues that it went for miles and miles and miles. I, I was at a, a golf event in uh, San Diego, California, where there were astronauts. And Al Shepard repeated this thing. It went for miles and miles and miles. Uh, Wally Shira, his Mercury buddy, said, no, it didn't. You know, you, you're wearing this great bulky spacesuit. You could only hit the ball with one hand. No way did it go miles and miles and miles. Now we can find out. With these rovers, we can go and find Al Shepard's, uh, you know, his golf ball. Uh, that's worth $4 million for the, uh, to go, <laughs> go do that. <laughs> well, there are lots of things on the moon that we could go to. There's no shortage of prizes. And uh, the interesting thing is what remains. Uh, this is an interesting photograph just taken a few years ago from an orbiting lunar spacecraft showing where Al Shepard landed. He landed in the bottom right, that's his lander. The, the package on the left, the ALSEP, was the scientific experiments he deployed on the surface. And if you look carefully, it's between them, you can see lines. They're Al Shepard's footprints. They're still there on the moon today. We don't know exactly what they look like because, as you know, the moon, uh, the, it's, it's a vacuum. There's no uh, weather, there's no... Uh, rain, there's no wind, but there is radiation, so we don't know exactly. And that's why we want these high-definition pictures of these heritage sites. We can learn so much from it. This is probably what Al's lander looks like now. The top is missing. He needed it to get home again. Uh, so it looks something like this. This is an artist's impression. We don't know what it really looks like, but when we get uh, high-definition photographs back from these teams in the Google Lunar uh, X Prize, we will have a better idea. And the engineers and scientists can learn a lot from the way the materials have survived o over time. So why do we need to, um, I I've told you what is up there, um, why do we need to protect it? I've also hinted the reason, one of the reasons is scientific and engineering. We want to be able to analyze what has happened through this 40-year experiment in nothingness. The stuff that's been up there, it turns out it's a good thing. No one's been back for 40 years because there's a perfect record of what happens to the lunar dust over that period of time. So we want people to be very careful when they go to, to, to see these heritage sites. This is Gene Cernan inside his Apollo 17 capsule. You may have seen photographs of him in a, of him in a shiny white suit. This is what it looked like after he came off the moon. He's dirty. He's covered in moon dust. Uh, Gene told me the moon dust smells uh, like cordite. It, it's a weird material that we need to know a lot more about moon dust. It, it has electrostatic properties. It gets everywhere. It gums up the works, even on your spacesuit. It gets, it's hard to uh, put things back together again. So we need to protect that knowledge of what happens in time. So. My concern as a judge is to encourage people to go ahead to heritage sites, but be careful when you get there. This again is Gene Cernan. Uh, we don't want the rover drivers to do this. Gene was trying to win. A, he was a jet jock, you know. 
they always wanted to win records. He wanted to be the fastest man on the moon, so that's what he did. All right, Gene, 11 miles an hour, well done, you know. <laughs> But uh, we, we, so certainly when with we, we, we judges are going to impose speed restrictions uh, because we don't want this happening near important scientific sites. Finally, uh, so we, we have the mechanisms for protecting the sites. We're going to, the judges will make sure that they are protected. Uh, why are we go in there in the first place? Uh, this is Charlie Duke. And uh, he knows why we explore. First of all, explorers. He means himself, Charlie Duke. And you can include the Google and Rex Prize rovers in and, and that category. Next, space tourists. Watch this space. They'll be coming. And then settlers. Now, maybe he doesn't mean settlers on the moon, apart from maybe scientific groups. But eventually, the human race does need a backup plan. And so there will need to be settlement elsewhere in the solar system. And the moon makes a jolly good place to start and practice. I think we need to go back to the moon for at least two reasons. One is to honor these guys who risked their lives the first time around. There were 24 of them. 17 of them are still alive today. I'm sure they'd love to see their sights again uh, through the lenses of this new generation who are bringing the, the, the space exploration one more step forward. We also need to do it for these little guys. When I was uh, first involved with this, I was totally passionate and space exploration gave me uh, an enduring vision of infinite possibility and even made me study physics and math, and I think a new generation needs that same inspiration. So what I say to the teams of the uh, Google Lunar X Prize, Team Pulley from Hungary and the others, is go ahead, good luck, I wish you well, uh, do your space exploration, try and win the heritage prizes, but be careful and don't disturb the heritage sites. Your grandchildren will thank you. I thank you.